Hi, last week we started to look at the book of Nehemiah in the Old Testament. You remember how God had rescued the people of Israel from being slaves in Egypt and given them a wonderful new land of Canaan to live in. And they lived there and built themselves a big, strong capital city of Jerusalem. And then it all went wrong because they turned away from God and started loving and worshipping other things. And God warned them and warned them until eventually let a big army come from Babylon. And that army knocked down the walls of Jerusalem and the gates and killed many of the people and took others away to Babylon. And one of the people who was taken away was this fella, Nehemiah. And Nehemiah was a man who loved God above everything else. And he prayed to God and he said sorry to God for how they let him down. And you remember how he then went to his boss, King Artaxerxes, and bravely asked for permission to go back to Jerusalem and get the walls rebuilt. And we know that God was at work behind the scenes because the king said yes. But what's the point? I mean, why bother? Nehemiah's got a really good job serving the king in Babylon. And those walls are around a city that's pretty much deserted. Why bother rebuilding them? Well, because Jerusalem being in a mess was like a great big poster shouting to the people around, the Lord God is weak, the Lord God is broken, the Lord God is in a mess. And Nehemiah hated that. He wanted the Lord's name to be honoured, not laughed at. Now, of course, the Lord God wasn't weak or broken or in a mess. His power doesn't rely on city walls. But Israel were meant to be a holy, set-apart people, declaring God's praises to the people around them. And at that point, they certainly weren't doing that. But God had begun the process of rebuilding his people. And rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem was part of that process. So the first thing that Nehemiah did when he got to Jerusalem was to go and see the problems for himself. So we went round the walls and gates of Jerusalem to see what state they were in, out through the valley gate, towards the jackal well, the fountain gate to the king's pool, and it was a complete mess. Walls that had been tall and thick enough to keep the people safe were now broken down. Wooden gates that had been strong were wrecked and burned. It was an embarrassing mess. And above all, it wasn't a place that brought honour to God's name as the people served and worshipped the Lord God. But remember that Nehemiah wasn't just a man who loved God above everything else. He also trusted God and did what he could. Look at what he said to the important politicians and leaders. You see the trouble we are in? Jerusalem lies in ruins and its gates have been burned with fire. Come, let us rebuild the wall of Jerusalem and we will no longer be in disgrace. And he knew that God was already at work behind the scenes and he told them how the king had let him go back to Jerusalem, had promised him safety on the way and had even given him some tools and resources to start the work. So they agreed, yes, Let's start rebuilding the walls, they said. And that's what they did. They put on their old clothes, rolled up their sleeves, got out their toolboxes and worked really hard. It must have been hot and sweaty and dusty and shifting those broken down stones around would have been massively hard work. But they all got stuck in. You see, it wasn't just the professionals like the, the plumbers and the builders and the plasterers who got stuck into the work. No, it seems to have been almost everyone. Like the sons of Hassanah who rebuilt the fish gate. Like Hananiah, son of Shelemiah, Hanun, the sixth son of Zalaf, who rebuilt part of the wall near the horse gate. <laughs> and I love this. The guys who usually made perfume and gold rings got stuck in as well. Their names were Uziel and Hananiah. And the sheep gate, I guess that's where the sheep came in to Jerusalem from the fields. 
was rebuilt by Eliashab the high priest and his fellow priests. Those guys were like the top religious leaders. You know, the ministers, the vicars, the bishops, the archbishop, all getting dirty and sweaty repairing the gate. And my personal favourite is Malkajar, son of Rechab, ruler of the district of Beth Hakarem. His job was to rebuild the dung gate. That's where they used to take the rubbish out and dump it in the valley. So probably a pretty smelly place, but Malkajar and his team put up with the smell and worked on the gate anyway. So that's great, isn't it? Nehemiah and the others started rebuilding the walls, but what's that got to do with us? Well, if we're followers of Jesus, then we belong to the church, God's worldwide family, and we are called to serve that church. And sometimes that means hard work, you know, a bit like in our own homes when it's our job to do the washing up or put the bin bags out or whatever. And when we serve the church family, we're working with God to build the church. But sometimes the church can look a little bit like the walls of Jerusalem weak and broken and in a mess and that happens when we drift away from loving God above everything and start loving other things instead and then we start to be disobedient to his word we want to choose for ourselves what's right and wrong instead of being obedient to what God has said in here in the Bible and when that happens we need to follow Nehemiah's example God is at work behind the scenes building his church. Let's work with him and let's bring honour to his name. And let's pray together. Father God, forgive us for the times when we've dragged your name through the dirt. Please rebuild us, change us, and we want to bring honour to you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen.